Hello, and welcome to the official podcast. We are recording this at the ungodly hour of 10 in the morning, so I'm far too tired to contribute. So instead, I'm going to set my two lovely co-hosts, Jackson and Charlie, up for the debate of the century. Starfield, go. God, it fucking sucks. I can't believe you like it, Charlie. <laughs> Don't you ever slander me like that again. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> So, the, come on. in a nutshell, this is going to be kind of like a, a mental health evaluation for Jackson because he loves Starfield. I'm not the only one that likes the game. It's not a mental health evaluation. And I want to preface, like, preface this by saying I completely understand where like all of the complaints are coming from. There are definitely criticisms with Starfield. It's not a perfect game. I'm not even claiming that. It's Such like an ass. 8 out of 10. What do you mean? The criticisms? Yeah. Like, can you even name one, or are you that mentally ill now? No, it, it, yeah, it's very, it's very Bethesda. It's, it's like Bethesda through and through. They haven't made any kind of like real leaps forward in terms of game design. So, if you played Skyrim or Fallout, you're pretty much getting the exact same package, just in a, you know, Starfield coat, like a sci-fi coat. Which, for many people, myself included, since it's been like eight years since the last Bethesda game, like I'm not beyond happy with it that there's no innovation really but i'm fine with it i'm enjoying it i feel like if it didn't have bethesda on the title you would be a very outspoken critic about like the lack of innovation or lack of changes over the last decade yes so would the entire game community as a whole See, I, I don't think so i don't have i don't have like a strong allegiance to bethesda i've been pretty critical of them in the past it's just this this one, I, I don't know, maybe it's like my love for sci-fi, or it's hit it's at the right time. It's not strong allegiance, it sounds more like low expectations, because from all the feedback that I've seen, yeah. people share clips of the graphics looking goofy, the animations looking goofy, and all the defenders just go, yeah, it's Bethesda, what did you expect? Yes. That is that's why, not good enough. That is why I can't stand this company. Everything is excused. <laughs> No matter which part of the spectrum it comes from. If it's really janky, really shittily put together, really flawed, really bad, then people go, oh, that's just Bethesda. They just have those problems. So it's still perfect. It's still amazing. There's nothing bad. Like, I think everything in the game is fine. Like, I really do. Like, there's nothing it's, it's bad fine. in it. It's just, it's just aggressively the exact same thing right. for the last 10 years. And, and which, they've been doing aggressively fine for 15, 20 years. How long until people start to say, wait, this actually kind of sucks that we've just been spoon-fed this same shit over and over and over again? So, uh, like, like I said, I'm currently fine with it because it's in a new setting and I'm enjoying it. Um, I would like there to be more innovation, but it's not like it's detrimental to my experience. And I think the main thing, like why that is, is because it's a new IP and also it's their first game in like eight years. So if they, if they were releasing games like this every single year and I was bombarded with the same experience ad nauseum, then yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be way more offended by that, like with Pokemon. But considering that it's like, yeah, it's been eight years. I think what like Fallout Four was the last game that I probably played from Bethesda Softworks. Um, like I don't know, it's 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 fine. They had fine Fallout seventy six. Yeah, I didn't I didn't play that. Mm. And also, that's what happens when Bethesda steps out of their comfort zone. <laughs> but even then, Jackson. So if the biggest selling point is it's a new IP and it's a new fresh take from Bethesda, the problem is, from what I've read, the story is god awful. And one of the worst, most boring Bethesda stories they've ever had. It seems to me, no. from what I've read, everything that makes Starfield unique and specific outside of it's a Bethesda game is bad. Like, the combat is clunky. The story is no, not the good. Combat's not no, clunky. the combat is far more improved than previous yeah, games. the combat's Absolutely. fine. It's just the exact same combat for the last ten years. It's just... It's not as buggy or janky. Well, so I remember hating better. Bethesda combat, so if it's not changed, I probably would hate it. No, it... It is way better. It is far less clunky now. Fallout 4 uh, combat was way more clunky than this. They have made improvements there. I, it could still be better, for sure, but it's 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 uh, an area where they have improved. Um, Story-wise, I, I got invested pretty quickly into it. 
I don't know necessarily why. I will say the dialogue isn't like great, um, but the overall story itself I think is compelling and interesting. So and this I, is something that it. that I got Jackson in the therapist seat with and got to the bottom of. There isn't a single sci-fi story Jackson doesn't like. Is no, what there mean. absolutely is. There I isn't. Would, you, you're misremembering. There absolutely is. Name a sci-fi story or setting you don't like. Well, currently Star Wars. That's not, but that's not fair. You love Star. It used to be your yeah. favorite. Property. I love. You've just been done with it because it's become so Bec- yeah. formulaic and bad. But you but now, like, but- you loved it, Star Wars. So what your 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 actual question is? Name a sci-fi universe you've always hated or disliked. That's fine, or just literally any of them you don't like is still the same. Well, thing. I just no, it's not because I just answered that. I currently don't like Star Wars. That's a perfectly fine answer. But it's not like you didn't like. You Star can't move Wars. the goalpost. Okay, fine. Uh, name yeah, one. But the you've only never reason liked. you don't like it currently is because you loved it. Yeah. To begin yeah. with, and now it's ruined. No, I think yeah. if I, if I was going in completely blind, I had never heard of Star Wars before. I don't think it would it w- it wouldn't do it for me because it feels so soulless. You still love most of Star Wars. You just don't like the new Disney ones, like like the shows and shit. And, but you still love the Star Wars world and overall lore of it. Okay. Yeah, th- someone in chat actually made a, a good <laughs> suggestion. Star Trek. Star Trek's something that I've never connected with. Have you ever watched Star Trek? Yeah, I've, I've tried multiple times. It's just never connected with me. Mm. Something about it feels plasticky. I don't know. It's because it's not really what that means. It's not really actiony. It's more kind of a drama. It's different tastes. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe I just haven't gotten far enough into it to be invested. But yeah, it didn't do it for me. But that's I, I, like I will concede, Charlie. I'll give you the point. I have a soft spot for sci-fi. I'm not sure necessarily like what point you're trying to make. There is though. I like a genre. But you like anything in the genre is the point. So it's like. It, you'd have to really try very hard to make something sci-fi that you don't like. Yeah, I, I disagree. There's definitely like movies, sci-fi movies that have been released that have been absolute stinkers that I haven't enjoyed, but they just don't come to mind because I don't focus on the ones that I don't like, you know? Like that Adam Driver movie recently, uh, the Elysium or whatever it was with Tom Cruise. And I'm sure there's plenty Elysium of games. Okay. That, right. that was Matt Damon. Yeah. Yeah, Elysium was kind of eh. You're thinking of Oblivion yeah. with Tom Cruise. Which oh, was, Oblivion. Yeah, Oblivion. Yeah, Oblivion. Was Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, Oblivion was very... Oblivion was a cool movie. There's plenty. There's plenty, there's plenty of movies um, that, I, that I could probably remember if I tried to, but like I focus on the ones mm. I enjoy. Video games-wise, I don't know. Uh, like, I... This, hmm. No, it was more I video games I was going for, but it. yeah, it's fine to not like some of the really bad sci-fi films. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but, but, but the point is like, it, I can still dislike something that's sci-fi. So it's, that's not it here. I, I've dispelled your point, whatever your point was. You still haven't named this single video game. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember any video games. The only, the, like Mass Effect, I love. Mm-hmm. Um... This I'm enjoying. Halo I loved when I was a kid. Not so much anymore. I don't know what else there is. Half-Life. Is that sci-fi? Oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I, I like that. Not so oh, much yeah, for sci-fi, sci-fi elements. Um, there's nothing else. They've never made a they've they've never made a single sci fi game. Detroit Become Human. So I enjoy. How many hours? Is it? How many hours are you into the game now? Because I know you started day one, or the yeah, early been, access, whatever it's called. It's been a week. I think I'm at twenty five hours total. Mm. So is and it really it. like? Are you loving it, or is it just? Oh yeah, it's out, and I'm playing it. Like I said, it's an 8 out of 10. I'm enjoying it a lot, but I can understand the like objective criticisms with the game. Like I, I definitely understand the criticisms and I agree with them. A lot of loading screens, the dialogue is not great. The facial animations are very not great. And there's a lot of uh, performance on PC is bad. It, there's, a lot, there's a lot to mm-hmm. criticize there. But it's like, the, it's like the, soul, the, the soul of the game is what I'm enjoying. The, the uh, Todd Howard's... Spark, I guess. But the Bethesda charm. <laughs> Charlie got offended when I said the Bethesda charm, but the Bethesda mm-hmm. Bethesda charm does exist. 
And that was the that was the point I was making earlier. I think a lot of reviewers and people overlook these faults because they say, well, it's Bethesda. They give you that Bethesda magic, but then you have mm-hmm. to ignore all the sparking panels and f- small fires and yeah, yeah. broken things. And I, I don't ignore the that pronouns. shit, you know, especially yeah, when nah. they've been there for who knows how long. And now they're charging $70 instead of 60 It's like not worth it. If you want to get the early access. Oh, a hundred dollars for early access, which is what a lot of people did too. Yeah, eight years, eight years of development time, and just like probably unlimited resources thrown at them from a trillion dollar company, as well as all the money they made from Skyrim and Fallout. Yeah, I could, I could definitely understand why people would would expect way more from this, but I just wasn't. I, I didn't go in expecting things, so it's not like I had my expectations dashed. In fact, I was expecting it to be bad. And to like me, I was going and thinking it was going to be a stinker. To me, that's extremely underwhelming if you go into a game company's new big AAA release not expecting anything good and still buying it. You know, for example, Super Mario Wonder is a game I'm very excited for, and I've watched the trailers and all that stuff, and I think it looks fantastic. It's got a lot of personality. It looks like a ton of fun. I'm not going to buy it just going, eh, it's a new Mario. Eh, whatever. And I think Bethesda, for some reason, that's just how people treat it and they still buy it and it just incentivizes them to just make the same thing over and over and over again the people the people buying the game and loving it at the moment are bethesda fans though they they go in excited for a bethesda experience they want that yeah i I guess i just don't like people's taste (laughs) and i wonder what's wrong with them (laughs) i mean it's fair yeah. Uh, yeah. What was your biggest problems with the game, Charlie? Uh, it's just I've I've played this game a thousand times from <laughs> Bethesda already. I, I just would would have liked more. Like I said, there's nothing in it that I think is bad, except the main storyline. The main storyline is actually fucking horrendous from everything I've played. I'll give you an actual gigantic fault. Um, you cannot run the game on a hard drive. You have to have an SSD, yeah. or the game literally won't work. And they never said anything about that. Which doesn't make sense to me because I feel like um, Starfield's the one game where we've gone significantly back in time with how many loading screens are in the game. Like, I I feel like if it was entirely loaded onto an SSD or optimized for an SSD, we'd be able to, like, have no loading screens. But this game has the most loading screens out of any modern game, basically. It's a ridiculous amount of loading screens. Well, it's because they they didn't bother, like, actually making big improvements in any capacity. Did you notice, Jackson, anytime you get, like, in an elevator or anything, it's a loading screen because they still haven't figured out how to do, like, elevators? (laughs) Yeah. I've I've read some interesting... (laughs) Really? Yeah. (laughs) I've read some interesting perspectives from game designers and stuff and it has to do with the way that um like you can leave items around in starfield's rooms like and they persist throughout the entire game like people are filling up rooms with potatoes and you can come back in the room still full of potatoes those same potatoes uh, like at how any much time. fun is that I mean, i'm not saying it's fun it's just the dedication to the simulation of the the, the world i guess or the persistence of the world, I mean. So, like, <laughs> can leave your potatoes around. Who gives a shit? Well, that, that's that's, a, that's an extreme example, but that's that's what the. Is the game even technically for. open world, or is it just a different bunch of hubs connected by loading screens? Yeah, it's it's, oh, it's that. definitely it's, open world. Well, it's open world, but he's right. That's how they implement the open world. It is hubs connected through loading screens, basically. Yeah, and that's how all all. Um, like, see, I wouldn't like run. that. No, that's not true. In Skyrim, you can go anywhere. It's just like uh, Legend of Zelda. You, it's an open map. Every time you try to go into a building in Skyrim, that's a segmented loading screen. You're in a new environment. Was it? I don't remember that anymore. It's yeah. been 12 years. You could be right. But at least the overworld was one map. Yeah. Do you remember when you try to go into Whiterun, the first big town, and there's a wooden gate at the front and you click the gate and it's a loading screen and then you're in Whiterun, even though realistically you should be able to just walk inside? Yeah, it would fade to black and then load it. That's for every Um, building. That's that's how Bethesda does their game mm -hmm. environments. Like there is one main game environment. But then there was a well, bunch of fucking small improve that then. rooms. Shouldn't yeah, they? I mean, I yeah, and people <laughs> ignore it. It's shocking how the game uses a 20-year-old game engine, and yet not only does it not run on hard drives in any capacity, but if you have lower-end graphics cards, it just doesn't run either. 
it's crazy to me. <laughs> can I? Can we? Can we talk about how people wanted this? Uh, how people wanted to be able to like fly into planets and fly like in real time across space and stuff, and that's where people's main hangups are. That sounds so fucking tedious. Like yeah. directly flying to each planet. So that that's something I think is a, a fine thing to talk about. That is interesting, and it's not. I agree. That would be very boring if you spent like you know two hours flying planet to planet. But they did lead you to believe you could do that. <laughs> like that was a big thing that a lot of people thought you could do, and for some people they? they wanted to. Yeah, a hundred percent. Didn't someone in the game fly to another planet and it took yeah. seven hours? So that was a no, no, That was recent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alana flew seven hours to get to a planet without fast travel, and when she got there, the planet didn't load. She fell right through because it's not intended. Oh, it's not, God. Yeah, oh, it's just a P. It, the planet is just a PNG. You're meant to yeah. just like travel there through the game system. Which, Jeez. like, I get, I get where people are coming from, but it's it's one of those features or something that you would like spend 30 minutes traveling to Saturn from Uranus or whatever. Like you'd spend the time sitting there doing nothing. And then you would never do that again. After that, you would always fast travel. Yeah, well, like but that's just you. Feature. That that's there's a lot of people that want that. You are you're dismissing the people who get deep into role play. For example, people who play yeah. Eve online and have actual full spreadsheets of just their markets and shit. People really sometimes just like playing a game to just live in the game. I could totally see people in Starfield. You know, you set the that. ship to autopilot, and then I don't know. You go on a menu and you're ordering stuff or they, whatever. Uh, they, if they want to do that, they can fly around space. Like, like uh, you can still fly around space. You just can't fly directly to the planet. If you don't use the fast travel, then the planet doesn't load, and it doesn't. There's no sense of role playing exploration there. It, it seems like it would be a massive amount of developer undertaking for something that a very small amount of people would. No, actually it's not. I, I can tell you right now. Literally, all they had to do is have a loading trigger when they get close enough to the planet to deload everything else and load all the textures and collision of the planet. It would take nothing at all. Because well, it's Bethesda. I don't, I don't know about game development to confirm or <laughs> yeah, deny that claim. <laughs> that, that was the biggest armchair game dev statement ever. Yeah, that's you. weird. It's like I worked as a software developer for three years or something. That right? is true. Yeah. If yeah. anyone would know, it would be. It would now, be Andrew, now to be fair. the groundwork. Yes, that's a lot of work. Oh, we have to install the collision. Oh, we have to co calculate physics. Blah blah blah. But once you have that in place, which they do because they have the engine, just put a flag that says if you're in this proximity of the planet, load all the things required for that planet. Load the textures. Load the collision. Load what all. What does that, that actually change though? Because that would just be going to a black screen, and then you're there. Like it's but, but the uh, see modern games that are good and made by competent teams know how to do that without <laughs> fading to black. And putting 30 yeah. loading screens. You see it in games all the time. Play. I'll give you a good example. Arkham Asylum, a game I've been replaying lately. When you're going into a new room, it has a little in-world explanation for why the door uh, takes a while to open. So sometimes Batman walks to the door and it fades to black and it loads. That's for giant area transitions. But a lot of the time when it's transitioning different areas, he'll stand in front of the door and it'll be like scanning security clearance. And in the game, in lore, it's like, ah, they're scanning Batman to make sure he can go through the door. And it makes sense. But what the game's actually doing is loading the next area and deloading the area behind you and yeah, making you the same stand thing there with to wait. Elevators. Yeah, well elevators like in, in Mass Effect. Uncharted fact. games yeah. where you go across slow ledges and stuff like that. Right. They're, the, they're all loading. loading the point packs. is, if you're smart, there are a thousand ways to hide loading screens. God of War did it with the cliffs. You spent all that time climbing cliffs and listening to them talk because it was them loading the next combat arena. Like, get, modern good games do very good jobs of this. Whereas Bethesda goes, no, just fade it to black, put the loading screen, and when it's done, load it. And all they had to do is put that there. They could have even done that. You get close to the planet, it fades to black, loads it, and comes back. But they didn't even do that. They didn't do anything. They're just lazy. What if you role play? since you're in first person, what if you role play that um, every time there's a loading screen, that's just your character's closing his eyes? <laughs> that's smart, yeah. <laughs> he falls you asleep. You can make your own fun. He, he has narcolepsy. He just falls asleep randomly. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius, Jackson. You fixed every problem with Bethesda. I'm trying to think, like, let's let's think about how they would do their current system where, like, let's say you're trying to enter a building, 
and that's a loading screen in current like Bethesda games. You try to open, you open the door, and then there's a loading screen. How do they pull that off then? So if it's a new area, it doesn't need to be excused because people get it. You know, you fade to black when you're loading a new giant area. When I went to Whiterun in Skyrim, I didn't get immersion broken when I click on the door and it faded to back and then it had to load all of Whiterun. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. It's a giant area. But for incidental things, you deload what the player doesn't see when they don't see it. You should watch a video on how they do perspective of game cameras where the world around you, you might think it's always there, but the game only ever loads what you're looking at. So if there's a yeah, tree yes. in front of your player and then you turn the camera 180 degrees, that tree is gone. It's in memory. The game knows it's there and anything that would interact with your player happens, but you don't see it. It. it doesn't visibly exist, and that saves the processing time from rendering the actual image and the physics and all that shit. Yandere Dev uh, got a lot of shit, that whole debacle of, oh, he's making a terrible game and he can't program, because every NPC in his game was visible and active at all times. Yeah. So the game was just <laughs> incredibly fucking laggy and CPU intensive, because he's making characters, for example, on the other side of the map... He's like showing them walking around and doing their whole routines. We well, don't need to do that. You just need to time it and point at the list and go, oh, at this time they're here. So now when the player gets there, we're going to show them that. But, you, know, you know, otherwise a game is just yeah. not going to run when it has any level of modern graphics and overhead. But Bethesda doesn't yeah. understand that, I guess, you know. This has been primary principle for the last like 20 years. It's not it's not just Bethesda. I feel like all games currently are releasing in unoptimized states or, or states where the performance is just shocking. So it's yeah, just, it's an industry wide thing. It is definitely an ind industry wide lax standard for quality, but also Bethesda's had that lax standard of quality for who knows how many fucking years. You know, we know exactly how many years yeah. over 10. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what in. In your opinion, Andrew, what was their last good game? <sighs> um, can't, can't do it, can you? I really can. <laughs> I, I really can't because I'm one of those people that didn't like Fallout 3. And, and, and you didn't like Morrowind? I tried it. I didn't get into it, but I don't think I hated it. You know what? I'll say Oblivion was actually pretty good. That was them, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oblivion yeah. and Skyrim, I think, yeah. are great. I liked yeah. Fallout Three. I didn't even hate Fallout Four. Like most people, I actually liked it. Mm. Yeah, Oblivion was pretty solid. I'd say. I want you to say one nice thing about Todd Howard. He is a great salesman. He can trick rich. people into buying anything. He is so extremely charismatic <laughs> for a video game developer. <laughs> He, when he walks out on the stage with his beautiful hair and his, like, you know, leather jacket and stuff, it just makes me want to pre-order the game right then and there. Jackson, I told you, like, I ran into people in real life telling me how much they want to give Todd Howard their money. He's and a mag, he's a celebrity. He's a celebrity. He is. Even my, even my girlfriend knows about Todd Howard now because I talk about him so much. Well, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's great. He's probably, he's probably my favorite. He's probably my favorite figure in the games industry. I'll, I'll give him an, a genuine compliment. He did what Mark Zuckerberg has still not done. He is the face of his company and is just incredibly good at selling it and making it look better than it is. Whereas Mark, when he tries to do the same thing, just ruins Facebook's image every time. Do you consider him like a Peter Molyneux? He was the he was the dude that did the Fable games, and he would always come out and and make these bold promises about the game that would just never fucking materialize. Was he the one when talking about one of the Fables? He was like, "We have over a thousand endings." Was that him? That was probably him. That that guy was he was loved for a little while, and then everyone hated him when he realized <laughs> all he does is lie about the game. <laughs> he just lies. He just lies. He he's just not makes even, like, shit up. He's yeah. not even selling it. Yeah, he, I don't think he's ever played the, like a game. <laughs> he just comes out and starts making claims. He, he came. I remember there was one like demonstration he did for. I think it was like Fable Two or something. 
And he came out and started making like these wild claims about how how great the game was going to be. Oh. And then he went to dem- demonstrate it on the screen and the screen wouldn't turn on. And he was just flustered. He, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> and he couldn't figure out how to turn on the screen. So we never got to see uh, what, he, what he was actually selling. I have a clarification on that quote. The uh, exact quote is, we have over 200 endings and that's not an exaggeration. And guess what? That's a Todd Howard quote. Todd Howard oh, yeah. said that about Fallout 3. And guess how many endings that game had? 200. One. And then they made DLC. Pretty but cool. That's, uh, were there multiple endings in Fallout 3? I don't remember. You could have a slideshow at the end that changed, but the actual oh, plot right. only <laughs> ever ended one way. Yeah, yeah, you find your dad or something. No, wait. You your find dad your dies. dad, and then he brings you to a thing, and then you have to either you or some other lady go in and save the world, and you shoot a guy in the face, and that's the story. But then the slideshow at the end <laughs> is like, here's what happened after that. Oh. Yeah, fair enough. All right, uh, that, that's going to do it for the Starfield rant of this podcast, I guess. Kai, are you going to play it? Um, maybe I don't know. So it's out now officially, right? So I don't have to yes. pay hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Plus seventy. Out. But you're gonna want to. <laughs> yeah, 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 you should still pre-order maybe. the deluxe edition. I mean, I could give it a shot and then refund it if it's not fun. But I don't like the idea. That's of what Matt did. Loading screens. <laughs> Just do Games Pass. Just do Games Pass. I'm not paying a monthly fee. Matt bought it, and within the first two hours, he was like, "Jesus," <laughs> and he refunded it. Good for him. He didn't like it. No, it, it, again, and if you're tired of the Bethesda formula, you're probably not going to like it. That's just that's just the yeah. the brass tacks of it. I'm also yeah, I like Beth- Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say I did like Skyrim, but I, I guess I'm the opposite of Jackson. I don't like sci-fi in my games. Really? Yeah, I like I'm more sci-fi of a Baldur's a lot. Gate, Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Are you fucking hypocrite? What do you mean you like sci-fi a lot? You're getting at me for like sci-fi. But yeah, but like, I don't just like okay. forgive it because it's sci-fi. No bullshit. Like, can you like I, I can't <laughs> name a single it. cool thing about the story in Starfield, and yet you like rave about it. Well, like, it's like give, you're give me something you, the give, universe. Give me something unique about it. Give Jackson, let's do let's do the avatar test for Jackson. Jackson, name a character who isn't the main character in Starfield. Sarah Morgan. Done. Is that an important character, Charlie? I mean, every character is important depending on how deep you want to go. There's, <laughs> True. You, there is Vasco. a lot. True. There's a lot you can do with the True. characters. But name yeah. something nice about the story, Jack, and give me a cool plot point. Well, I don't. I don't want to spoil anything. No, but just, eventually, you don't know him because it's fucking. It's fucking lame. Here, here. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler warning for anyone listening. Kai and I don't give a shit. For the love of God, spoil it, please. Just give. Uh, just give me one storyline you liked. You love the the uh, Vanguard storyline, so tell me about it. What'd you like about it? Oh, there's a there's a scene like where you save an outpost from these giant beasts called Terramorphs, and uh, eventually you go back to New Atlantis and you you go and meet the president of the of the planet, and you're trying to convince them that the Terramorphs are a real threat. And then what, while she's like dismissing you and telling you you're fucking stupid for believing in, like the Terramorphs are an actual threat, the whole planet is invaded by, <laughs> invaded by Terramorphs. <laughs> And then she's desperately pleading with you to save them from the Terramorphs. <laughs> and so then you, you got to go kill the It terramorphs. sounds like a naked gun oh. skit. <laughs> How could this possibly have happened? It's like, it, it seriously was like 9-11, but with Terramorphs. <laughs> like the whole base shut down. There was like sh- screaming and like enormous explosions heard from outside. And then she's like, oh my God, it must be the Terramorphs. <laughs> and so then you have to go outside and uh, peacefully... Um, knock out civilians who are attacking people because they're like indoctrinated by the Do you have horse. to peacefully knock them out? Can you kill them? You can kill them, I'm sure you can, oh, nice. but I didn't want to upset Sarah Morgan. <laughs> it sounds like a fifth grader wrote it. There was a really <laughs> bad group called the Terramorphs and we've never ever seen them and then there's an explosion. Oh my god, it's the Terramorphs. <laughs> they're back. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it justice. It was actually pretty cool. I was yeah, like, you're definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do justice to such high concepts as terramorph terrorism. Oh man, that's so yeah. good. No, but there's there's been plenty of there's calling been plenty the of moments. Terrorist aliens, terramorphs is like calling your villain Darth Insanius. 
<laughs> it's right yeah. up there. Well, so I think the Terramorphs were originally created by the humans as like they were used in the colony wars or whatever to kill people. And then they went rogue or something, I guess. Or well, we couldn't control them anymore. So now they're back with a vengeance. What a unique story. That's very cool. That's not the main, st- that's not the main story. That's just, that's just a faction. No, the main story is so much worse than that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Summarize the main, the main story in a sentence or two. What's it about? Uh, it has nothing first, to do with Terramos. Well, yeah, for like the first hour, it's collect these mysterious artifacts for your boys and girls club. And then cool. you start to yeah. fig- you start to piece together why they're so mysterious. Ooh. Why so many people might want them. Ew. Uh, is it like the Infinity Stones? No, 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 no. Kind of. <laughs> does, Thanos the only show, thing- does Thanos show up and just you have to fight him with the Avengers? Because that'd be a cool game. Yeah. That'd be a it's good the only game. thing standing in between us and the terror morphs. And then you could play as a, a teenage girl who gets to meet the Avengers and hacks Tony Stark's computer. Yeah. Yeah, it could be worse. This could be Avengers. Yeah, getting with something they, else. They it could be worse. It could be a story about AI going rogue in the galaxy. I'm sure that's in there somewhere. I've just got to get to it. You can't do a sci-fi <laughs> game without AI going rogue. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, do you have anything you want to tell me right now directly? Oh, yeah, I do. I actually forgot. Thank you. Um, ExpressVPN is the Mm. thing that you need to be using when you're on the Internet, whether you're surfing for content locked in your region based on your streaming services or you want to play the newest bethesda game but realize i shouldn't give these fucking hack frauds money i should play it some (laughs) other way wink wink well expressvpn is going to be the exact tool you need when going on websites that you might want to be a little careful about checking out expressvpn is rated number one by cnet and tech radar it'll work on your phone laptop, even your router, so that way anyone who connects to your Wi-Fi will be protected. You're going to get a double whammy of VPN service with these guys. You're going to have your data encrypted and protected from people snooping around all over the internet for information, as well as unlocking your region to access all the streaming content and other region-based goodies on the internet that you could ever imagine. This might come as a shock to you listening, but one of our hosts literally needed ExpressVPN for this show to keep going for a good long while. And that's a very fun tale of intrigue that we'll likely never have time for. But what we have time for right now is to remind you <laughs> to protect your online privacy by visiting expressvpn.com slash official today. That's expressvpn.com slash official, and you can get an extra three months for free. Expressvpn.com slash official. So now that you have protected yourself, maybe it's time to get a little loose. Maybe it's time to get a little crazy. Maybe it's time to play a little bit of America's pastime, which everyone knows is betting on sports events. And that's why you can hop on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL that is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is going to be hooking everyone up with game day greatness, and you're going to have a bunch of offers every single game day this September. But the only way you're going to get those offers is by checking them out through us and going to the DraftKings Sportsbook. Download now and use code OFFICIAL to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting $5. That's code OFFICIAL only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. And now I have a fun little disclaimer to read. Everyone loves these. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, they're 
NY or text Hope NY. In Connecticut, you can call 888 789 777 or visit ccpg.org. Play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsibility. Gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. See, that was painless. It's like when you get a shot at the doctor and they give you a lollipop after. DraftKings Sportsbook, code official. Was that last bit in the mm-hmm. fucking disclaimer? No, I added that part so everyone would feel better at home. No, oh, nice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. Mm. I had another topic if we need another one. It's up to you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is the it? The studio that made everyone's favorite video game, the Saints Row Reboot. Oh, yeah. Is nice peace volition. Closing. Being shut down. And I I can't believe this could possibly happen. Crazy, right? Who could have seen that coming? Are you, are you How happy come? or upset? I don't know. I I guess when you take a beloved franchise for goofy, over-the-top gangster shenanigans and make it about millennials whining about student loans, it doesn't sell very well. I don't think anyone's surprised, well, I think, but I am sad yeah, to see them go. They had some incredible games. Yeah. Think it's, when you make a bad game, it sells bad. <laughs> it was just a I, bad I game think it's putting down an old dog by this point, you know? Like, there were some great times, good memories, but that that new Saints Row was such a bad sign for things to come. It's it's not just that, though. They've had a few previous stinkers as well. So I think it's just one too many. And then they got put down. What else did they make? Agents of Reflection. Mayhem before this. What was that? The Punisher. That was also Saints Row. The Saints Row games before this. Uh, Saints Row 1 and 2. And right. What was... Wasn't there a Red Three Faction game that was really bad? Was Armageddon. That yeah, it was yeah. really bad. Yeah. So how come they made the first four Saints Row games and those were okay and then this new one was so cringy? I don't know. Was it a whole Oh, they team? made Red Faction 2. What the fuck? I love that yeah. game. They made Red the Faction. Punisher game. Oh man. Okay, I'm sad now. Red Faction Guerrilla, I still think is one of the most impressive games that's like ever come out. I love that game so fucking much. Wow, yeah, they did used to make great stuff. What happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they did. And and they're just uh, not just cause the the um Saints Row like original trilogy is fantastic as well. Yeah. Well, two and three. Uh one was not very good. Um did did you guys play the Red Faction demo ad nauseum? Before it released, I remember that was like one of the demos on the Xbox 360 that I would just constantly play. Just like see it into my memory. No, but I, I remember very fondly playing Red Faction Guerrilla with my friends and then we'd go into the Xbox yeah. arcade for the once a week one verse 100. Oh my God, it was so fun. I remember yeah. <laughs> uh, back in the day, Red Faction 2 was a PlayStation 2 game that I would run from Blockbuster, and it was super fucking cool because their marketing gimmick was destruction and destructibility, which back then was like, holy shit. So one of the ways they'd teach that to the player is there'd be a door, and it'd be like, card key needed. Like, get the card key, you idiot. Like, typical shooter shit. But instead, you take a grenade launcher, and you blow the wall open next to it, and you just walk around the door. And it was all, like, dynamic. It was fucking amazing. The Sledgehammer Gorilla. The dis- so Destruction in Gorilla is still unmatched, even today. I don't know what... Fucking 14 I, I, years I, later. I, I get why it's computationally expensive and difficult to pull off, but why are dev- like developers trying it more? It's so much it's, fun. It, well, this is what I said to you, Jackson. Games are too expensive now, and they know games are going to sell regardless, so they don't have to put in that kind of work. Uh, I guess... I, I don't know, but I, I think a game would sell better if it had destruction. No, I mean, it's not going to make a difference. Look at Back for Blood. Back for Blood is legitimately a downgrade in every possible way to Left for Dead 1, and yet it still sold fine. And it's that way because they didn't need to put in a ton of work. People were going to buy it regardless. Yeah. So why put in all of the extra uh, attention to detail? People, are, I, I, don't, I don't understand the premise of this argument because people are going to buy it regardless, sure. But if you make it good... And you put in interesting features like destruction, people will buy it more. A good game will always sell better long term than a bad game will. Will they? 
Uh, you sure? Look at Starfield. Well, I, I like Starfield, so can we come, come up with a different example? <laughs> but <laughs> even still, Jackson, even, let's say it does sell better, which I think it should, but that's not always the case. But even if it does, it's still a gamble you'd take because that add an extra like six months of development time, a lot more cost yeah. in order to do all of that. So for most studios, it's not worth that risk for potential better sales when they can just guarantee sales with minimal effort. Then you, you're you're depending on the fact that like it's a established franchise as well, though. With like yeah. Back for Blood, you had a developer that they, they did they did um, Left for Dead, right? No, total, that, total that's rock. such a fucking lie. Watch the Crobcat video. Only like six people in the entire team touched Left 4 Dead. Yeah. But they, they marketed on the basis that this yeah. is from developers of Left 4 Dead. Right. So yeah. you're coming with a built-in audience there. If you're, if you're making an entirely new AAA game for whatever reason, not like that happens much. Well, Starfield is an entirely new IP. But like if you are making an entirely new IP that's a AAA game, surely you want to have something like that niche to rely on at least. Like you know, immense destruction, destructibility. I think that would be a compelling selling point. Yeah. It was a selling point for a while. Battlefield 4 or Bad Company yeah, exactly. 2, whichever one. Whichever uh, one it was 4. No, it was 2 well, that first started. Oh, no, like but I remember, I remember 4 had the, like, level structure. Okay, it, level, level, uh, calm down, level everyone. Evolution? Calm down, everyone. It might have been 3. It might have been Bad Company 2. Whichever no, one started Levolution. Might have been four. Yeah, Levolution. Yeah. I think it was four. I think it was four because yeah. it had the skyscraper that crashes down that turns into an right. entirely different map. But the, right. their entire marketing was, hey, look at the destruction. It's fucking crazy. And it worked. Like, it had a yeah, rough people launch, loved it. but it was a good game overall. Mm -hmm. And people I loved it. it. I loved the destruction. I loved four. I played the fuck out of four. It's one of my most Same. played games ever. I love Bad Company 2. Also very so good. good. Yeah. They're both very good. Which yeah. also which also had good destruction. Yeah. Th yep. That's what I'm saying. Destruction needs to be added to games more. As much as as much as I love beating a dead horse, that was a big complaint with 2042 from both me and fans. It just didn't have destruction. You just couldn't blow shit up anymore. And it was way well, more they, they, but there was like very little interactivity. I think that's what destruction is good for. Yeah, it's it's that interactive nature of the game. You're yeah. changing the environment. That's why Minecraft is so uh, successful. <laughs> That's they the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to know what I don't understand, though? So going back to Red Faction Guerrilla, mm -hmm. that game only took them, what, like three years to make or something? Probably less. And it's so technically impressive compared to anything that comes out today that takes fucking six years to make. So, like, yeah. how does that work? Like, how is that even possible that it takes far longer for games to come out Too now? Too many moving parts. While um, being less... Yeah. It's, it's too many moving parts. Take, for example, the God of War original trilogy. Those games came out relatively quick compared quick. to one another. Um, it's because you're too. working with much simpler hardware, much less memory implementations. The graphics are far simpler. And also the, the, lower, yeah. the fidelity is lower. All these parts. And not only that, but the sequels are reused assets out the ass. Yeah, you design a new environment, you make a new weapon, but your character model is the exact same. Your this is the exact same. This is the exact same, etc. So there's a lot of ways you can just copy and paste shit. Whereas if you take God of War 2019 and Ragnarok, they barely reuse anything. And it's all these gigantic assets that take a long fucking time to build. Compare the world design to the original God of Wars to the new game. And it's like in the new games, you look out and you see this vast expanse of textured places and yeah, physics and events. effects and graphics. And in the old games, yeah, but it was like hallway or maybe a simple swamp, maybe a cliffside. But it was it was far more limited in what you had to see, you know? Yeah, tech tech and creative scope of video games has absolutely, you know, quadrupled since those games back in the uh, late 2000s. Um, but it, I, I, I do feel like there's some, like, issues on, like, a management and company level that are leading to this as well. It does feel like there's more organizational issues yeah. in modern era gaming. Than there were back then. We are in bloat. You know, the, the industry's in bloat. We've gone from games that were 50, 60 people teams to now two, three, four hundred people yeah. teams and hundred million dollar it's very budgets. Hard organizing that many people. Yeah. It's it's too big. The industry is too big. I, I'm shocked we haven't had a crash yet. Cause it's just so fucking big. We're not we're not I I don't believe 
data crashes in sight when the industry is still making more than every other industry, entertainment industry combined, and that's growing. It doesn't seem like we're in, we're in much danger currently. Maybe eventually, but True. it's looking pretty, pretty good for these companies currently. I guess people would actually have to get tired of games, and that's just not going to happen. Yeah. There are fads in the industry that crash, like there was the gaming, uh, music instrument gaming crash, like Rock Band and Guitar Hero all died. There was the VR crash, there was the motion controls crash, like all that shit is dead, but... You know. Yeah, like Battle Royales is the latest one, right? That's pretty yeah, much that's dying, thankfully. You know what I'd really like to see the return of, though? Mm. Games that don't look, like, an amazing graphically, but have so much creativity and fun shit to it. So, like, unique visual styles? No, 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 no. Literally, like, Red Faction just, Gorilla. <laughs> you just want to play want Red game, Faction game Gorilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, the Just Cause games were good for that as well. I, I really like the Just Cause. Well, Just Cause 2, I remember, mm. had pretty good. It was fun. Not as much destructibility, but it was a very fun sandbox. Yeah, it, it was like fun. I don't feel like when people make sandbox games anymore, or if they do, it's so overloaded with just tedium that mm -hmm. it just ruins the vision or what they were intended to be. Games, those kinds of games just do feel a lot more boring now. Most modern games are just starting to feel a little boring, to be honest. Is this, it this year's, No, this year's been an incredible year for gaming, but like... In general, well, how are we feeling this if this year has been the best year in gaming in probably like 20 years? Maybe it is just us. We are getting older. I've noticed that my time has meant a lot more to me in terms of that. Like if I pick up a game and it goes, okay, if you grind this for two hours, then it'll get really fun. I say, fuck that. Whereas a kid, I used to be like, I better get started. Oh boy, <laughs> only two hours till it's great. <laughs> I hate that fucking argument. I've always hated that argument where if, like, just stick it out for the first 10 hours, then it'll get good. Then it's worth it. The Love anime that. argument. Give me the good stuff. For yeah. 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 The oh, One man. Piece argument. Jackson, you were playing Starfield. So when it, I, Starfield was good for me for the, from the beginning. If it, if it didn't catch me in the first two hours, I would have been out. Which is actually just fucking insane. That <laughs> it somehow gripped you in the first two hours. Hey, man. Oh, Todd's got me. Todd's got me by the balls. <laughs> what, were you say what were you saying, Andrew, Kaya, someone? Oh, I, I don't think the industry is going to crash, but I do think they're going to have to do some reformatting of just getting rid of useless employees. Again, the Twitter thing of getting rid of maybe 80% of them that aren't doing anything and replacing a buttload of them with AI too and AI tools. I mean, how many writers are you really going to need in the boardroom to write shit like, oh, I cannot pay my student loans, right? Yeah, AI can do that with just the instruction of, hey, how would a zany millennial talk who's a bum and has no job? And it's exactly like that. It's funny that um, there are jobs like that that are outsourced to boards and teams when really it just takes one person with a good idea. I'll use my mm -hmm. top dog fanboyism as an example. Hideo Kojima makes these games. Oh, fucking Christ. They, he, he makes these games that are just, here's a stupid idea I have. And for the most part, they rein him in, but they kind of let him do what he wants. And pretty much every game he's made has been a huge, incredibly successful hit that's well remembered. Yeah, it's the same thing as uh, the music industry in a bit, isn't it? Like lyric writing. Whenever you look at a very popular pop star's lyrics, like Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande, all the songs have like credits of 40 writers each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yep. you look at the lyrics and it's the same word repeating. Same go, crap. Well, yeah. How did 40 it's, people it's, write no, this? It, it's got to be that they were, they were just in the room. Like, you, you were just spinning ideas. That's my point. Actually, That's my point. Right. When you look at games that come out now, AAA games that have had like half a decade's worth of development time and half a billion dollars of a budget, and you look at it and it kind of still sucks, you go, how did this happen? How did this many people have this much money to work this long on this game and it's still kind of crummy? Maybe it's the same thing. It's just a lot of people sitting around. It's too many chefs in the kitchen. You know, they they flatten mm -hmm. the ideas out rather. If you have one person spewing their ideas, it's going to be very much towards them and you're going to get a lot of their personality and their thoughts. But if you have a bunch of people spewing their ideas, they're only going to agree where they agree. So it's going to flatten things out. It's going to take away some of the uniqueness, some of the edge, and it's just going to make it more whatever. 
You know, there's a reason that indie games often have not often, but can have games that just have really out there weird fucking stories and ideas because the creator just goes, here's the idea I have. I'm going to make it. OK, I'm doing it. Whereas if you're a triple A game, you're not allowed to do that. There's too much money on the line. There's too many markets you have to hit. Yeah, you're you literally in, can't, yeah. you know. Yeah. Have you guys seen that um, Steam is now rejecting small developers if they use AI in their games? Yeah, I think they said that from day one. Uh, did they? Or they're going to have to change this rule, right? Some guy on Reddit made a post how he worked on a game of his, his own indie game, for three and a half years. And he apparently had a mod in the game that was completely optional that you could turn on in the settings. It is not enabled by default. It's completely optional. But what it does is... You give it your chat GPT token, uh, API token, and if you do so and you enable the mod, the NPCs in the game use AI to talk back to you rather than his pre-written lines. And he says that Steam removed his game for quotes containing AI and basically just uh, quote unquote retired it from the Steam library. And he was quite bummed about this. And I don't know. I feel like they're going to have to walk this back, right? Steam. They can't just reject a technology like AI, especially when companies like NVIDIA are already um, leaning really into it. You guys remember the presentation uh, NVIDIA CEO made with a hole-in-the-wall sushi shop? Oh, it was yeah. very bad, but yeah. nonetheless, <laughs> if a company like... Those technologies are bad at the beginning. Yeah, it's gonna be, of course, it's going to suck at the very beginning, but nonetheless, the point is more so like the graphics developer, the graphics card manufacturer is promoting this stuff to game developers. At some point, Ubisoft is going to use this. Bethesda is going to use this. CD oh, yeah. Projekt Red is going to use this. Mm -hmm. Is Steam going to turn down all of those games? I don't think so. No, yeah, no, that's not going to last. So either. I think until then, it's going to be these little, like, small-time indie developers who are going to get caught in this law. Not law, but these rules until it changes. Steam's rules are law. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, well. very interesting how that's going to shape out in the next few years, where you find that line. My biggest advice would be, don't add AI to your game and instead add destruction. And I'll buy yes. it. Yes. Oh, yeah, so good. Add Levolution. That's what more games need. God, I love this. I don't know why they. St I, I don't know why they stopped doing Levolution. It's so fucking too dumb. expensive, and they don't need to. Jackson, I already fucking yeah. told you. It's like you're not listening. Yeah, 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 yeah you know the game. I just that, uh, hate your feedback. I hate. I hate your ideas. <laughs> I hate you and your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for nothing, I but you guys rhetoric. know a franchise that had destructible levels from the very beginning is Worms. Oh, no, not to toot their oh, horn. Yeah, Worms. Horn, but... No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. They created <laughs> even that. the 3D ones, which was pretty unique at the time when Worms, the 3D versions came out, and the, all the levels were still destructible. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And how's Worms going now? Oh, Jackson. Uh, people still play it. No, they don't. You can't just Worms low blow a man like that. Like, come on, dude. That's Would not, you, I mean, it's not going well. I agree. The Team 17 has let them down. I, somehow they're still not shut down. Volition made one bad game and they immediately got the fucking boot on their neck. <laughs> but Team 17 has been releasing these pathetic Worms games and they're still making money, I guess. I would like to see like an open world Worm game where it's just Worms, but an open world with all that destructibility. It's like a competitive, destructible game. God, I, I know, wish. Cool. If they made like... GTA worms. Is there a battle royale with world destructibility like that? Uh, the finals. There was. Oh, right. I'm so fucking hyped for that game. I hope that game good. was actually that's fun. from That's from X Battlefield games. It is. Uh, yes. Battlefield devs, it is. Right? That's why I was excited. I, I hope it's fucking good. I, Did you play I, I, the beta, Andrew? I watched it. I wasn't around. Like, I didn't have time. But You weren't around for a whole month? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. It was three weekends, wasn't it? No, it was. I, I think it was like actually three weeks long. I thought it was three. Oh, and they well, did I it twice. Maybe I just didn't play it and I'm an idiot. I thought it was yeah, no, like it, a weekend or two and I just coincidentally no, wasn't home. That was that went on for a while and they did it okay. twice. Okay. Yeah, well, I played I, it. It was really fun. I, I didn't play it because I'm a fucking idiot then. Um, no, I, it looks good though. The only problem with it is like the play tests were super duper laggy, mm. like almost unplayably laggy. 
which I'm sure is just from the play test. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the technology catching up with it. That's probably why more developers don't add destruction. If maybe. it's, if it's following the battlefield not. model, it's going to be a horrendously buggy beta followed by a horrendously buggy first month. And then after that, <laughs> it'll work great and be amazing. Well, at least this kind of did seem like a beta instead of like how video game developers use beta currently as just a marketing thing where they release a demo a week before release and call it a beta. <laughs> yeah. God, that fucking pisses me off. Was it, um, there was another game, was it Crackdown where they were promoting an MMO basically were, but like their servers were supposed to do all the calculation for the destructible. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it was, was Azure. Three. Wasn't it Microsoft, Microsoft Azure, wasn't it? The servers? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who it was, but I think they did like one public test once and it just, it was, the connection was so bad. Nobody could destroy anything or even play it. And what then it happened? just fizzled out. What happened with that franchise? Because one and two were huge games and then three just seems like it, it was there and then it was gone. That Because that's what it was. The th three got stuck in development hell. It got really ambitious. Yeah. Like they released an incredibly cool like tech demo. Concept. Right, I yeah, remember. Is that where they're like shooting the windows and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're blowing up yeah. like a huge the skyscraper. entire skyscraper. Right. See, that's that's uh, we're walking a fine line here, gents. That's what happens when you do get too technologically <laughs> ambitious <laughs> and add destruction to everything. You end up with Crackdown Three, which sucked. We could all use a uh, little more Crackdown Three. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Crackdown Four. There's a limit. There's a limit to ambition. That's what I'm saying. I think the problem is graphical fidelity, man. People just require the games to look super fucking good these days. I would gladly take a game that looks shittier if it means the gameplay and mechanics are amazing. No, you wouldn't. You love the sparkly graphics and shit. Oh, it, it tickles I love your them. He's right. Brain. I love them. Ah! Your brain can't handle too much complicated gameplay I, I think the, I think stuff. the market's there though take a battle bit remastered a, a, yeah. game, a game built on and literally designed to look like Roblox was really really yeah, popular it when it came out still is actually Roblox is. Roblox in general is like the biggest uh, I don't know convincing argument you can make for games looking shit and still being successful yeah Roblox and <laughs> Minecraft are like the biggest fucking <laughs> things ever and yet they look like well my, Minecraft Minecraft I, I don't think looks ugly no, it's stylized. Yeah, Minecraft but it's has simple. a style. It's not. It wasn't like a technical yeah. choice. It's simple. Yeah, but it's even simple. at the Roblox. time, I, I, I didn't. I didn't play. I didn't play Minecraft and go, "Oh, this game looks bad." But with Roblox, I'm like, "This game looks bad." Yeah, but this Roblox is, is for looking. children, and yeah. specifically, kids don't give a fuck what how their games look that they're playing on their iPads that their fucking alcoholic mommy gave them to make them shut up. God, no got, offense. That got so real. That got so real. Roblox, Roblox <laughs> runs in a web browser as well, whereas Minecraft originally ran in Java and then on consoles and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it looked better. <laughs> well, I mean, Minecraft does not look bad. It has a style. It's a, But it's a very simplistic style. My point is, I will gladly take games where the graphics are just there to serve the game, and the focus is on the mechanics. Like, take give me a game that looks like Minecraft, but like it has destructibility better than Battlefield Four. I'd play that forever. You know. Ooh, imagine if they made Starfield and Minecraft. Oh yeah, yeah. let's so go. Good. Without loading screens. Teardown is a good example. Teardown is a good example. Although again, I don't think Teardown looks bad. Um, so is there is there a, an example where or a limit to that like where you would um not be able to play a game because it looks so bad even though the gameplay is good i don't think there's ever been a game that i think looks so bad i can't play it yeah there's yeah. ugly looking but you're, you're, games you're you're ge you genuinely play shitty games for fun so well yeah but what does that what does that have to do with anything I just, I just, I'm just like, I don't think you have a limit. <laughs> I don't think you're like the average consumer here. That's the true. Person. I am limitless. I'm unchained. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of a game I ever stopped. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, know what, Jackson? We, we even have an argument fucking countering that. Cruelty Squad is like the most intentionally ugly looking game ever made, and it's extremely popular and successful. Like, get, graphics don't matter. 
They they really don't. If you make a they good matter game, to dummies. They matter for fucking idiots who want shiny, sparkly spectacle. But if you make a good game or an interesting game, it really doesn't matter how it looks. People will play it. I agree. Look, Minesweep is on every single computer known to mankind for a good reason. That's that true. Slaps. Although I don't think people are debating which version of Minesweeper looks better, <laughs> you know? True, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'll buy the HD version. Yeah. <laughs> the the re-release. Man, fuck video games. They used to be so good. What yeah. happened, video games? They used to be cool. Video games did used to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it a coincidence that the exact era of games we grew up was the best era, and there's no arguing that? Can't be a coincidence. No, not at all. Is there ever going to be a new, um, like, hobby or medium, I mean? Like, will there be a new gaming? Video gaming? Mm, yeah. Like, TikToking, I guess. Or sex, know. too. No, like, TikTok is social media. I guess social media counts, but that's... It's old by this point. I just want, I wonder what next, what, like what entertainment form will be next. Surely there has to be an evolution. Yeah. Maybe VR, but I don't know. That's kind of dragging its feet. Still gaming though. I bet we're going to find, about gaming. I bet we're going to find safe drugs. So people will just get high, but, oh. but in a way that's like safe. Like you're locked oh, in like a little safe. protective bubble but you can do any drugs you want. No, no, no. So you know how like if you do heroin or cocaine, it's like, yeah, you do get high, but also your body breaks down and fucks up your veins. It ruins your actual health. I bet we're going to be like, hey, we just came up with heroin that has zero negative side effects. Like it's not addictive. I'm surprised it doesn't they haven't done that brain. yet. I feel like if that was possible, they would have already done that. Yeah. Mm, maybe the technology hasn't found it yet. Maybe we're just almost there. Maybe humans just maybe. can't do that. Oh. Or maybe they just don't want us happy. Maybe God doesn't want us want to me. enjoy life. I don't think we're going to get right. that anytime soon. The f <laughs> unless the cartels invent it. I think Big Pharma currently is concerned with uh, making diet pills again. Which mm. is a trend from the early 2000s. I remember mm. when You're I was... talking about Ozempic? Those were all the rage. I, Ozempic and they're also working on a new one. I think Ozempic is... Which is the off-label um, diabetes medicine that they're currently not diabetes? Is it diabetes medicine? It is diabetes. What was the yeah. goof we talked about? I think about it has that? a bunch of side effects right now. The what? What was the? We had an episode on that, didn't we? Where people were taking it and we were making fun of something with related to that, the Ozempic stuff. Uh, Ozempic Could is be. huge right now for weight loss. It that is, and what goes Was that the one where it gives you like a weird face that's like really squishy? What? I, I can't be the <laughs> I don't know about this. That. We had an episode. You have Photoshop. We had an episode months ago, many months ago, where we talked about some new designer drug that was showing up on social media and it was giving people really shitty, goofy side effects, but they kept taking it because they were like, oh, I'm losing weight. I can't be the only that one remembering like this. Ozempic. It might be Ozempic. I, I don't yeah. recall. From what well, it makes your face scrunch up a lot. I don't know. <laughs> That's news to me, maybe. Oh, well. Maybe I'm just making Maybe. my own shit up. Yeah, you oh, might be suffering so. from stupid person syndrome. Yeah. Gameritis, yeah. But yeah, I do think there was like an Ozempic shortage at some points because all the people just are getting it off label, essentially. And now, because of its success, uh, Big Pharma is working on actually dedicated uh, weight loss pills to the point apparently that it's affecting the economy so much so apparently the company that makes Zempic is now so big that it is uh it outgrew the entire economy of denmark it's a danish <laughs> company <laughs> holy shit oh my god it's and it got to the point the infamy of these drugs these weight loss drugs is getting so big that like it is having a ripple effect on the entire weight loss industry as a whole to the point that weight watchers is now considering making a shift from helping people lose weight to just being like an additional to making like supplements and such you know hey take your azempic take your weight loss drugs and also we're going to sell you candy bars I mean, supplements in general are like the biggest industry at the moment. They are so enormous, at, at least over here. Like supplements are going wild. 
Oh, it's the same way here. In general. Yeah, we there's always a round table going through on whatever the new supplement is. Like New Tropics was huge for the longest fucking time. There's always some sort of pills and whatever that people go, this is it. This is the thing. I just, I don't know how people believe it. Yeah, well, no, uh, to be fair, Ozempic does work very, very well for weight loss. Like, what, it, what, so what, it, it does just strip away fat. Oh, it, it is extremely effective at weight loss. Yeah. Like, actually. Is it a new, new discovery? No, it's just okay, Mr. Took, Pfizer. <laughs> yeah, my, okay, not ch- I don't think it's good. I'd rather people lose weight the old yeah. fashioned safe way, but it does work. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's just who's pathetic. paying you? So Ir- it's irrefutable. It, like it does work. Is it is it not safe? How unsafe is it? Well, what's crazy is, and this is what makes me mad. It's not that unsafe. <laughs> like it's well, then, then do it. <laughs> Fuck it. If you can't lose the weight naturally, it's much better that people lose the weight unnaturally. Then I'm fine with that. It puts you in a healthier position. It's using diabetes medication. It isn't necessarily not, good. Yeah, yeah. For, it's unintended. Yeah, first of all, purpose. you can't just you can never just pop pills without side effects. That's one. Two. Just losing weight isn't necessarily in and of itself a good thing if you don't make lifestyle changes. There was like I said, they're now working on oh, another yeah, drug. Agreed. And one of the things that the company was talking about uh, that makes their new drug so cool is that people potentially could sh- uh, keep shoveling themselves full of fast food without ever gaining weight. Exactly. It's like, well, even if you don't gain the weight from it, all that shitty food is still going to have an effect on your organs, on your system. You can't just eat that much grease and corn syrup and call it a good habit or think that it's healthy just because you're not gaining weight. And look at it from a logistics standpoint. What's your fucking plan? You just power down Ozempic for the entire rest of your life while still eating like that? Really? You're just adding a new addictive substance to your life. You're going to have to stay on it. Otherwise, you're going to gain the weight. It's probably That's healthier true. than being a beast, though, right? I mean, it's probably going to be more comfortable for you, yeah, not hauling around 600 pounds, but if you still continue the 600-pound lifestyle... Yeah. right. Okay, it's like if you said, if they made a drug for, like, alcoholics where you no longer get drunk, but you still keep drinking two bottles of vodka every day, that's still not good for you, I would imagine, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah this this whole so. thing, this whole thing is really just fucking putting an ambulance at the bottom of a hill rather than fencing it off. You know, people go, oh, I need to lose weight, so I'll just power down drugs instead of doing any sort of thing to change the actual problem, which is your bad eating habits or lack of exercise yeah. or whatever the fuck yeah, yeah. it is. Lifestyle. Yeah. It's sad. Or maybe you're, maybe you're big boned. Look, if you if you need it for, like, medical intervention, like, I need to lose weight or I will die, fine. But this is in no way ever going to be a realistic solution. It's what we were talking about before where, for example, dieting, a diet should not be a thing you do just to lose weight. It should be how you eat all the time. It should be a change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the big firm isn't going to give a fuck about potential side effects. They're going to rush this through their quote-unquote research and Q&A and all that sort of stuff. And they're going to put it on the market. And 10 years from now, you're going to have fucking tumors growing in your belly. And they're going to go, oh, whoops. Uh, here, <laughs> Whoopsie. $10 <laughs> settlement. Yikes. <laughs> Take our next drug. It removes tumors. Yeah, I was going to say that's when they released that next drug, which conveniently removed tumors. <laughs> also, listen to this. So the company that makes Ozempic is uh, Novo Nordisk. And... Danish economists are apparently now considering if they should make, uh, are now debating whether the country needs to publish another set of economic statistics that strips out Novo Nordisk. In other words, there is Novo Nordisk and there is the rest of the economy. It's so fucking big that they have to omit this company from their economy, basically, so they can have more accurate statistics <laughs> yeah. on how Denmark is doing. Jesus Christ. That's insane. So... Uh, when was this drug introduced into the general market? Oh, it's, it, it's, it's been, been diabetes time? medication for a while, but I think it was... People so, have discovered that it's got, like, weight loss properties. Well, it was, like, a celebrity thing. So a bunch of celebrities started using it for weight loss, and now the general public starts using it for weight loss because of that. Mm. Okay. It is a brand name for semaglutide, which was introduced by the FDA in 2017. So that is pretty, that's much yeah, more recent than I thought. Five years old. Yeah. So it is 
That that's interesting. I, w- I wonder how many like fat people will be left in like the twenty thirties. Then do you think we're gonna trend the other way mm. now, and everyone's gonna be super skinny? Ooh, do you think in America, especially, they're gonna argue that like these weight loss drugs should be a human right under like another oh. amendment in the constitution? Yeah, you need you need to be given it by the government. Yeah, carefully regulated militia with weight loss drugs. I, uh, yeah, I guess that is possible. People will do literally anything except put down a fucking burger. I, I know, man. It, well, it, oh. okay, don't you ever fucking say something <laughs> like that again. It's called freedom. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> oh, God. Our diet culture, No, you should man. have the freedom, but... I don't know. I think this is going to make things worse because, oh God, just think of how many people there are who feed their kids and make their kids obese. And now they're going to pop these pills on top of it. Just blunt these pills into their baby bottles and feed their children. This Have you seen those those Again. TikTok videos of teen moms with their uh, feeding routines, basically like their, their yes. dinner routines? Oh, that one. And mm-hmm. how they prepare their meals and stuff. And they just look catatonic while they're fucking putting like frozen pizza and like... Uh, like cheese it's on the fucking plate for dinner i'm like no yeah, wonder people are fucking fat yeah the one video that you put in the in our channel it, the mom put gatorade or like mountain dew or something yeah. in the baby yeah. bottles you reminded me of a great video i think about a lot um have you guys heard of the tv show iron chef probably right yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So there was a special... only from Futurama, though. I've I've only seen it in Futurama. <laughs> okay, so it it's pretty much what they parody on Futurama. There's celebrity, okay. not celebrity chefs, but like gourmet, incredible professional chefs, and they have a cooking competition with the challenger. Blah blah blah. So there was a special that aired back in the I want to say late '90s, and it was like Iron Chef comes to America. It's a Japanese TV show. So they were like, we're gonna fly the Iron Chefs out to America and meet like famous American chefs and talk with them and cook with them and teach classes and do this world tour in America. So they brought a contest winner to the studio. She was like a mom who lived in like fucking Missouri or somewhere. And they were like, you won our food network contest and you're going to have iron chef hero, Yuki Sakai come to your house and cook an iron chef meal for your family. And she was like, wow, that's amazing. That's great. And he was like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm an iron chef, blah, blah. blah. And when he got to her house, he spent the whole time complaining. Cause he said, where's the fresh food? Where where are the vegetables? <laughs> I can't just cook you frozen fucking pizzas. What the fuck? He literally <laughs> scours her entire kitchen for 20 minutes and he's baffled. He's like, I can't make you anything. It's all frozen garbage. What the it's fuck? It's kind of fucked that they expected the prize recipient to like <laughs> pr- provide the ingredients though. He should have come with like caviar. I shit, know, like, but the whole truck, point was he was going to show her how to cook food. it at home. So he just opens her fridge and he's fucking dumbfounded by what he sees. I bet he cooked that frozen pizza exceptionally <laughs> well though, right? Yeah. Put the oven settings on the right. Like, yeah, the right temp. Five star nuggets, knows. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he knew exactly how much tomato sauce, ketchup to put in there. Yeah. I want my Michelin star hot pockets, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Oh man, yeah, just shows things have not changed. It's like it's like a hot pocket on a on a plate garnished yeah. with like a little bit of cheese. Uh, cut uh, in a half. hot pocket reduction. He puts the sauce on one part, the <laughs> tomatoes on the other. He, he cuts it in half and throws out half into the trash for proper portions. <laughs> so the, apparently the weight law, uh, sorry, the Weight Watchers CEO has said that Ozempic spells the end of diet culture. And apparently Weight Watchers is now going all in on weight loss drugs and prescribing them. And if you don't know, Weight Watchers used to be, you know, you eat a salad instead of pudding yeah. and then you give like yourself ready-made meals right? or something. Well, so it was, it was also their own products of... Of diet stuff. Like yeah. Weight Watchers would be like, buy our cookies. They're healthier than regular cookies. Buy our protein bars. They're healthier than protein bars. That I thought was it was, I thought it was yeah. like the original meal subscription service where they send out like frozen, ready-made, healthy meals, basically. Might have been. They still had that veneer of, okay, skip the skip the cake and have a the whatever, our cookie salad instead. At least for a while, when I was little. Now it's just, yeah, eat whatever the fuck and pop these pills, I guess. Can we start the prescription service like this? I have an idea. Uh, Chemo. I can send you... Yeah, look. 
I know a perfect drug, chemotherapy. It'll make you lose weight. <laughs> you can eat whatever you want. You, you will not have any appetite, but, I mean, it'll shut the pounds. He's got a point. Wouldn't most drugs effectively do this? No. Don't some drugs make you really hungry and fat? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't mean, hell, drugs. if you want to lose weight, start smoking. Like cigarettes suppress your appetite like nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Else. Isn't isn't that what like isn't that what like ballet, like young ballet dancers? Like, are do? you talking they about the fucking Simpsons back. episode, Jackson? Jackson? Yeah, I only know things in terms Jackson. of things Matt Jackson. Groening has done. <laughs> Sean Connery was very disappointed in you on that one. You're referencing the fucking <laughs> Simpsons episode, aren't you? I am. I yeah, am, I yeah. knew it. I've seen that episode too, you but motherfucker. That, Just because they haven't but, doesn't mean I won't catch yeah, but you. It is, but it's true, though. It is also true. Smoke meth. Yeah. yeah meth, we all want you something. Yeah. Is, uh, okay, so meth is the one that sheds the most weight? Yeah. Yeah, which hard That's drug like is Ozempic, the best for weight loss? Like, on the street, though. <laughs> but wait, all crack Ozempic. junkies also look, like, frail and thin, right? There's no, like, yeah. fat crackheads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crack. I mean, I guess you could mix the two if you want. I've got to head out, though, boys. All right, we can wrap that. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. Patreon.com slash the official podcast for bonus episodes. We've also got Podophiles. Podophiles is on Patreon early access as well as on Spotify. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, other than that, we'll be back. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.